Hello everybody, Luke McBain. Um, today I am going to talk a little bit more about values, meaning, narrative, um, the interconnection between those three and then perhaps uh, already indicate why mythology is important um, within that to start off. Um, my whole quest was always to figure out what is that thing which we call values. So which is extremely important in leadership literature. Everything is based on values. There's a lot of talk around values. It seems actually nothing can be done without values. Um, that is, is pretty much understood. So it's all about like value-based leadership, uh, integrity, communicating those values. Uh, you have whole organization businesses having value statements and so on and so forth. So that is already pretty much um, already set in stone and you can already say that also this aspect of having a future vision is also something which is very prevalent in leadership literature that you have this aspect of good le leadership requires to have a vision of the future and um, really believe in that vision and strive towards um, achieving that vision uh, and also that is is more or less uh, understood and yeah practiced let's say it uh, and also in terms of vision statements and all these sort of things so you could argue the the values which one or a group of people carry within them is a um, if projected into the future constitutes something like a vision so if all these values could be um, and acted in the material world, they would produce a certain future, and this is the future we envision. So, in that sense, yes, we there's something already out there which makes sense. And my quest for values was always, what is that, and what is the connection between these values, which can be observed in the working world, and the values which are being described in Aristotelian poetics. Uh, because the interesting thing there, again, is that values are the basis for any sort of dramatic art or narrative, which follows basically always along uh, the same patterns uh, now for thousands of years and probably will do so in the future. And every um, Hollywood movie has the same pattern and it's, it's really executed perfectly each time um, and renewed again and again, which is that there is a hero figure, a protagonist figure, which has a certain set of values and then encounters a, a problem, an accident, incident, and is basically thrown off course by that incident and is striving to regain or achieve something or put the world back into order. Sometimes also the protagonist voluntarily goes into uh, a different state, uh, a different kind of world and encounters the unknown there in that world. So it doesn't have to be an accident incident. It could be also a conscious decision by the protagonist to really encounter something completely different when being challenged then usually what happens is this crisis and this cathartic um, process by which the protagonist then discovers that these values the the previous value system um, was not enough or is not enough actually to encounter the unknown and also to defeat the antagonist and solve the problem so there is this uh, moment of crisis and uh, yeah, death of values and then re-emergence of values within that process, but in a more complete form. When the conflict is resolved, when there is resolution, when the crisis uh, has receded, the protagonist basically is reborn within this new identity or within this new set of values and usually a much more complete set than uh, in the first act. So one of the things which I looked into was this whole question of narrative and it seems or there's very strong indications that narrative is not 
only a story which is being told through drama, but narrative is also a way how we make sense of our environment. The first step would be to realize that what we consider as value, values within, within us is that aspect or those aspects which we use to evaluate incidents and objects which are in the world and which we encounter all the time. And we um, ascribe then meaning to those objects and incidents and persons through those sets of values. So we evaluate those objects either as good or as bad or as useful or not useful and so on and so forth. And we base our decisions on them, our decisions for actions. So if you study narrative carefully, uh, you will already discover that values are at the basis of that. Um, and that actually narrative is not only a story which we tell each other, but that's actually a structure which we use to navigate our lives. And um, if that becomes clear, then it becomes more interesting to study actually um, narrative to figure out how values come into the world, how they come into individuals, how um, they're being propagated within cultures. For example, people tell each other stories all the time. So what worked, what didn't work? People try to figure out that all the time. And they tell each other these stories on what they did to solve certain problems when they encountered problems with other people uh, or within their work. What people do is they start uh, talking about that to each other and tell stories. And these stories are very important uh, to learn from each other, to have ex to, to gain that com uh, experience, how to deal with uh, complexity, and they're being collected. And they're being collected in the, uh, in the social uh, collective memory um, and being retold again and again. If it was a particularly good story, in this case, you could say a good story would constitute something which is of interest to a, a, a large amount of people. So these stories then get retold, they get collected, they get written down. And um, if they're interesting enough, as an example, what is, uh, let's say, successful behavior, how to arrive at a certain goal in life, what is a good lesson, and so on and so forth, then they become novels, they become poetry, they become song, they become drama, they're written down and they're codified and they're being preserved in that cultural heritage. Certain forms of uh, narrative creation have more universal truth to them than other narratives because they survive and they address then hundreds and thousands of people. And that's how you arrive to mythology. So um, these are basically very, very old stories, which are uh, thousands of years old and which are being told over and over again. And um, that's why I find Greek mythology so interesting, because for some reason, these stories, although they are so ancient, still are able to interest us. Um, and the same goes for fairy tales. Uh, the same goes for um, religious uh, text, which um, has, uh, you know, very powerful anal analogies and metaphors. If we go through that pattern, if we go through that hierarchy of narrative, uh, coming to dramatic art and uh, novels and uh, mythology, um, if we see that as a hierarchy and if we see myth fairly uh, at the top of this hierarchy, then you could argue that these narratives become more and more condensed within the relevancy of the information which they carry, um, not only for the number of people, but also for the um, number of incidences which you could encounter in your life and your work. What they tell you is something about yourself. Um, where this journey is heading, um, how to understand the journey, 
um, what to do and not to do, uh, how to have a happy, successful life. All these questions are being addressed there, but again, in a very tightly condensed, highly symbolic form, which um, is like a certain code. So um, a symbol is like a highly condensed bit of uh, bits of information in the smallest possible place. So a myth can be very short, but um, can contain a lots, lots and lots of information if um, de unpacked, basically. So they they move us on a on a they might move us on a subconscious emotional level and fascinate us, but we might not be able actually to read them beyond the actual part of the action within the myth. So that's um, why values are interrelated with narrative, myth, with mythology, with art in general, with the production of art, and um, why I believe at the core of leadership is art. It's an artistic expression. And that is why I am researching more and more this aspect of artistic expression, of how things are being said, of why they're being expressed, and what they could mean for us. Because if we understand better how art is being produced, then also we could understand better how leadership is actually produced. I see leadership as being within the same realm as art production. It is, we, just to go back to the beginning and perhaps close the argument from the beginning, as I told you, it's um, common knowledge or widely assumed that values are very, very important for leadership and the future vision is very important. So there is a already three aspects which are very similar to that of narrative. One, again, the question of values, the question of how um, do we act within the world based on our values, what might we encounter within that process, and why do we act to achieve something we deem desirable in the future. We have that future state which we want to arrive to. So there are already these three components which are already the structure of narrative, so which are already being lived uh, within the real world without us much um, recognizing that as fact. It is an enactment, leadership is an enactment of an artistic process shaping the unknown into the known, very similar to or identical to what is happening actually in a narrative arc where the protagonist faces the unknown and has to deal with that and make meaning of it based on his or her values.